Jessica Werb. I'm the arts reporter with the Georgia Strait. I'm here at the offices with a guest, Nicholas Simons, MLA for Powell River and the Sunshine Coast, and he is also running for the leadership of the NDP, who's been kind enough to join us with his cello. Why don't yeah. you tell us um, how you got started playing? Oh, I, I, uh, I was expected to play a musical instrument in my family, and uh, my father was a singer and t music professor. But I, I studied quite a long time into university and just a little bit past university. And then when I came out west um, to, for my master's degree, I kept playing in community orchestras and then played a bit with Kamloops Symphony and then the Prince George Symphony. But, and with groups, like when I lived in the East End, I played with you know, various little rock bands or folk bands. And, and I still get to do some of that too. It's fun. So you're here also to talk about your art policy, so can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, the arts have had a really rough ride. Yeah, the arts have been basically put through the ringer mm -hmm. by, by the government. And when you consider the importance of the arts to our communities, I think that it's appropriate that the public uh, interest is protected by ensuring our artists get a chance mm -hmm. to do their art. So I think what's what's really been a problem is the lack of stable funding. You know, the Arts Council needs to be able to uh, to, pr to to plan for the future, not just do um, you know year by year, kind of hoping to get money. And I think so, stable funding and arm's length from government. I don't think government really has a has a place to to dictate what artists do, so I think the Arts Council is a, a good place to, to, to allocate funds. But also there's the game and grant money, and I think we need to restore the game and grant funds to nonprofits and charities, and that's been huge, that's had a huge impact on the smaller groups around the province, uh, festivals and museums, and um, so I I'd like to see that 33.3%, which was basically promised to the people of the province when gambling was expanded, to go back to the arts and to the non nonprofit and charities. So that's another thing that I think is important. So speaking about the gaming money and the memorandum of understanding with the province, uh, the arts actually have never achieved the 33%. So do you think that's achievable? You know, in all things about policy, a lot of people want to have simple, straightforward answers. And I say that's the goal. That's what we should be trying to. We should get the, the arts funding in British Columbia should be at, you know, shouldn't be the lowest per capita in all of the country. I'd like to see it at, at least the average of Canadian um, contributions to the arts. So that would bring us up quite a bit. That would be another policy goal that I would have. And, no, I don't think there's any argument about the importance that the arts play in our communities. Just, not just the economic arguments, but just, you know, people get together, they meet each other through the arts, whether it's, uh, you know, helping with stage design or directing a play or, you know, the visual arts and music. <laughs> talk about the Arts Council, do you have a, a figure in mind for their budget? Well, no, I don't, you know, I think it's important just to say that uh, the goal would be to restore funding to 2008, 2009 levels, but ultimately to get us to a place where we're not the lowest in all of Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we, you know, it's a minute figure that the government contributes to the arts. And uh, there's such a diversity of artists um, they're everywhere in the province. They bring something to our community that is sometimes not easy to measure, and, but it's important to, to, I think, recognize that that's what makes communities attractive. It's the, the physical beauty, obviously, but also the, the vibrancy of a community, and that you can sort of tie directly to the, the vibrancy of the arts community. When you talk about an arm's length BC Arts Council, what do you envision? Well, other jurisdictions uh, in the country have, have less connection between the direction of funding uh, from government. So as what you want to have is an is arts council that has the capacity to make decisions about the allocation of funds. Um, because 
really it's it requires some expertise. It requires some some vision. I think you know while we're talking about vision, I think we need to be obviously talk about what is the cultural vision for for the province and where are we going to be ten years from now. Um, how are we going to make sure that our communities uh, remain healthy? And I think part of making them helping them remain healthy is to ensure that their art, artist communities attract people to. Mm -hmm. You know, our rural communities uh, are attractive to professionals, to doctors, for example. Um, if there's, if there are things to do, if there are activities to be involved in, and if there's a, a rich cultural uh, mosaic that they can be part of. arts got shut out of the gaming grant so you'd like to see them restored to those organizations yeah well you know when the government decided to expand gambling there was a portion of that that was going to go to the nonprofit and charity sectors and you know recently in the last couple of years we've seen those budgets slashed completely at the same time that they're promoting the casino development and paying for casino development I think most people in British Columbia would like to see uh, you know the restoration of funding to the small theater groups because you know they 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 basically form the cultural cornerstone of our communities. So, you know, it's a question of priorities, and I think most people in British Columbia would like to see the arts community supported, um, probably above subsidizing uh, private casinos. <laughs> <laughs>